Okay, so for today's lecture, I want to talk about how sorting is effectively done between the map set and the um, and the I'm sorry, the tree map and the tree set classes. So we've seen two classes now, concrete classes that can sort the elements from lowest to highest order. And so the way that sorting occurs is by defining a means of comparing them. And so in today's lecture, I really want to introduce the interface comparable that any class can go ahead and implement. It's an interface so that we can start making use of being able to sort our own user defined classes with a, a tree map or a tree set or even a queue has what's called a priority queue, which allows you to effectively sort and pull the highest priority things out before lowest priority. But the only way any of these kind of data structures that will allow you to access the elements based off of a sorting requires you to be able to define a means or measure of comparing one object to another. So a quick overview for this, uh, this uh, lecture will be, uh, an introduction of what the comparable interface is and when to use comparable interface. Uh, we'll look at the interface declaration of comparable and the one method or the method inside of comparable, which is to com uh, compare to, and then finally some examples, some source code examples. So a quick introduction to comparable. Well, comparable inter is an interface in Java, and it defines a compare to method. And the entire purpose of the compare to method is for comparing objects of the same type. So in other words, comparable interface defines a standard way in which two objects of the same class may be compared. It is mainly used to provide the natural sorting order of objects. So natural ordering means the usual ordering that you would define. So, for instance, the natural ordering of our number system is we it, for if we, if we want to start at zero, it would be starting at zero and then incrementing up. For example, the natural ordering of strings is alphabetical: a before b, b before c, and so on. The uh, natural ordering for numeric values, as I just highlighted, is like one before two, two before three, and so on. So, Java comparable interface can be implemented by any custom class or user-defined class. So if we want to use an arrays or collection sorting method, we need to be able to uh, implement off a comparable. The sorted collections are the natural sorting order defined by a class to determine the order of objects. So again, since we are creating these user defined class, the, uh, the responsibility of defining like a two string method for our classes is on us. The, the uh, responsibility of defi defining an equality measure between two objects in our in our user defined classes is on us and the means of defining how one instance of our class compares to another instance is also on us in terms of sorting so if you want to store objects in sorted collection you have to implement the comparable interface so the comparable interface was introduced in java 1 and it's been present in the java.lang comparable package and contains only one method named compare to so this isn't part of the java.util package, but it's part of the collections framework in the fact that if we want to use user-defined classes to put in some of these sorted uh, collections, then we have to implement off of this. But this is part of the java.lang package, which is the same package that string and all the, uh, the uh, auto-boxing uh, primitive data types like the integer with a capital I, double with a capital D, all reside in. So when to use comparable interface in Java? Well, suppose we want to find the larger or smaller of two objects of the same type, such as two students or two employees or two dates, two rectangles, two squares, or two circles. In order to compare the two objects, they must be comparable. To accomplish this purpose, Java provides a comparable interface. The purpose of using comparable interface is to compare, it is its compared to method and it compares one object with another, and it uses a relational uh, definition. 
So one object can be less than the other, one object can be greater than the other, or one object can be equal to the other. So a quick explanation of what the comparable interface declaration looks like. It's a genetic, generic interface just like most of the other collections framework we've been looking into. And its general form declaration looks like this, so public interface comparable, and then it uses the angle brackets to support generic typing. And of course, the T would be, uh, the T would be replaced with whatever data type is being compared. So there are several classes in Java libraries, such as big decimal, big integer, Boolean, byte, byte buffer, calendar, string, all these implement comparable interface in Java. In fact, any uh, um, reference data type that can be sorted has to implement the comparable interface. So let's look at the compare to method. So the comparable interface provides only one abstract method that is used to determine the natural ordering of instances of a class. And the signature of this method is as follows. So it's public, it returns back an integer, it's called compare to, and it takes in an object. And so here, and, a, a, um, and so here, if we look, this is an example of exactly what our interface is effectively designed as. So it resides in the package java.lang. It is a public interface comparable that uses generic typing, and it has one abstract method, returns an integer, it's called compare to, and it takes in an object data type. So that is the actual implementation of, well, the abstract, well, an interface. An interface doesn't have any implementation, right? So that's the definition of that interface. So the compare to method, is used to compare the current object with some specified ab object that's passed into uh, the parameter, right? It's returned, it, it returns an indication that is as follows. So if the compare to method returns back a positive integer value, that means that the current object is greater than the specified object. So that means this object is greater than the one that was passed into the parameter. If the compare to method returns back a negative integer value, then the current object is less than the uh, specified object. So this object is less than the object that we're comparing to, the one passed as in as a parameter. And if the compare to method returns a zero value, then that means the current object is equal to the specified object, the one that got passed into the parameters. So let's try to understand this with a uh, few following examples. We won't look at actual like full code examples. We'll look at code snippet examples. So suppose we have A and we're gonna call on A compared to, and we're gonna pass in B. So if we get back a negative number, that means that A is less than B. If we get back a zero value, then that means A is equal to B. And if we get back a positive value, that means that B is less than A, or that A is greater than B. Okay, let's look at this other example. Let's suppose that we wanted to take a new integer three, right? So this is a reference type of three. Uh, so we're gonna box in a primitive int into a reference int so that we can call the compare to method on it. And we're gonna compare it to the integer five. Well, it's gonna return a negative value because three is less than five. Let's look at this example where we have uh, the string ABC and we will compare it to the string ABE. Well, that will return a negative value because the string ABC alphabetically comes before the string ABE. Now, suppose we have some date objects. So I'm going to, from java.util.date, uh, create a date instance where that is 2021-11. So the year is 2021, January 1st. And then let's say I create a second date, which is 2020 of January 1st. Now, if I take date one of 2021 and compare it to date two, which is from 2020, I'm gonna get a positive value because date one comes after day two. So thus the numbers, strings, dates are all comparable. We can use the compare to method to compare two numbers, two strings and two dates. 
So in general, we can sort elements of string objects, wrapper class objects, and user-defined class objects. If the two objects are not compatible with each other, the compare to method will throw an exception named class cast exception. Excellent. Let's take a look at some examples. So let's have a comparable student. In this example program, we will define a user defined class student that will implement the comparable interface to sort the list of elements on the basis of role numbers. So let's take a look at the source code so that we can better understand this. Let me jump over there here, and this is going to be comparable. So again, I have this project with some comparable. Okay, here, let's open a comparable tester. Okay, so here I'm just going to have both my student and my uh, comparable tester in one Java file, but let's take a look at, at student first. So I'm going to create a class definition of student, so a class student, and student implements comparable, the uh, comparable interface, and we're going to use that generic typing. So we're going to, in angle brackets, put that it's going to be comparable using student instances. And now I'm only going to have three properties in my student, a string name, an int value that is the role number, and an int for age. I'm going to create a constructor that allows me to take in those three parameters and bind them to the instance variables. And then I'm going to override the abstract method uh, declared inside of the uh, comparable interface. And so I'm going to have a compare to that takes in a student, returns back an int. And so here, this is going to be the decision. If the roll number is equal to the student's roll number that gets passed in, we're going to just return a zero. Otherwise, if the roll number is greater than, the roll number for this student is greater than the roll number of the student that was passed into the compare to method, we're going to pass in, we're going to return back a positive value, a positive integer one. And if it's not equal to, and if it's not greater to, then, then the only other option is that it's less than, so then I will return a minus one. So here my, my, I've defined equality, greater than and less than, based off of an integer return value. So to actually test this, let's create a tester class here. I'm gonna call this comparable tester one. Let's go ahead and import some uh, classes. We're gonna import the concrete class array list so we can ha have more than one student, so we can have a collection of students. I'm also gonna go ahead and import the collections interface. I'm gonna create three students here. John with role number 20, age 15. Peter with role number 15, age number 16. Deep with role number 25, age number 15. And actually, let me, run this right now so that we can compare and see what the output is as I talk about the code. Okay, so after we create these three students, we're going to create an empty array list. We'll call it AL. We're going to add into our AL array, uh, our array list, those three students. And then on collections, We're gonna tell our collections class, we imported collections. We're gonna go ahead and um, uh, call the sort method on it. And we're gonna pass the array list to this helper method. This is a static uh, uh, method that's inside this collections class. So this isn't collection, this is collections with an S. I hate when they name things so close to one another. So this is a concrete class that has helper methods for collection data types. So one of the things that we'll have is a sort method. And so we can pass it our array list, which is a collection data type. And then what we can do is since we've defined a comparable, we can now look and print out each of our values. And you'll see that the sorted order is that Peter with role number uh, 15 is going to be first, John with role number 20 will be second, and Deep with role number uh, 25 is third.
Excellent. So now let's look at another example. Let's look at a comparable, I don't think I do student here. I think I call this comparable person. Yeah, I do. Okay, so here, let's do a comparable person where, where we can define our sort in reverse order. So let's take the same example program, but we're gonna change the class name so I can have it all in the same uh, uh, package where we will sort the list of elements on the basis of roll numbers in reverse orders. All we need to do is change the particular code in the student class. So let's go to this example. So here, student is, uh, I renamed this person so they can coexist inside of my package here. But here you'll see that it implements comparable person. It has all the same instance variables, name, role, number, age. It has a constructor that's exactly the same. And it has an override method for compare to where it takes in, well, a person instead of a student. But the logic is almost exactly the same except for this check. We're still saying if the role number is equal to the other person's role number, then it's equal. But now what we're going to say is if our role number is less than the other person's roll number, then we'll return a one. So to compare what we were doing before was we were checking to see if our roll number was greater than, and that gives us an ascending ordering. But if we flip that and say, well, if our roll number is less than their roll number, and then we would turn a one on that case, then that's going to give us a descending ordering. And so just to test this out, and again, let me go ahead and run this, and then we'll look, and the code should be exactly the same, right? So here we have uh, three persons we're making. It's going to be John with roll number 20, Peter with roll number 15, Deep with roll number 25. We're going to create that array list. We're going to add our people into the array list, and we're going to use the collections class to sort our array list. And now when we go to iterate through it, you'll see it's now in descending order where we start with the greatest value, deep with roll number 25, John with roll number 20, and Peter with roll number 15. So one of the powerful things about going to uh, and implementing your compare to method is you get to decide what is defined as natural ordering and whether like you want your, uh, your ordering to happen from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. It all is based off of how you return the values. Uh, your integer values. Excellent. Okay, I want to look at a, another type of comparable here. On a, I let's build an example. Let's do one more uh, example program where we will learn how to sort employee objects in Java using our comparable interface. And in this example, we will create a employee class that will implement the comparable interface and will sort employee information based on their salaries. So here's the uh, employee class. And here is the, um, here is the tester, but let's actually open this up inside of our IDE. So we can actually go ahead and test this out. So let me walk through the employee class. It's gonna implement comparable, the comparable interface. We're gonna use that generic typing so that it's comparing one employee to another employee. Our employees are gonna just be defined as two different variables, uh, instance variables. So uh, a name modeled as a string and a salary modeled as a double value. We'll have a constructor where we can go ahead and pass in a value for both the name and the salary. We'll have some getter methods where we can get the name, where we can get the salary. Here we'll also define uh, a hike salary where we can pass in a 5% value, uh, a double value, and we will calculate the hike based off of the salary times whatever the percent value is divided by 100, and then we'll add that hike to the salary. And then our override, the the method definition for our 
comparable interface will be this compare to method where we return back an int. And in this instance, we're going to take in whatever the uh, type is, right? So if it's comparable of employee type, then the parameter is going to expect an employee instance to be passed in. And so we're going to compare if our salary is less than the other is salary, then we will return minus one. And if our salary is greater than the other salary, we'll return one. And if, if, if they're not greater than or less than, then we're going to assume equal. So then we'll just return zero. So again, we, we have a ordering that we've defined now based off of salary. So if I go and run this, and then we can walk through here. Okay, so if we go to run this, uh, first, what we're going to do is we are going to import our arrays collection of methods. So arrays has helper methods, helper uh, uh, static methods that you can apply on primitive array types, whereas collections has uh, helper methods, helper static methods that you can do on collections data types like array list. So here we're going to look at the, and you should have seen the arrays uh, class in 1583. I'm pretty sure that's covered. So here, let's create an employee, a primitive array of employee that holds three employees. Let's add three employees into this array of staff. Henry, that has a salary of 30,000. Carl, with a salary of 70,000. Tony, with a salary of 39,000. Here, we're then going to sort our array. So arrays.sort and pass in our staff. And since we've defined a comparable, we can now sort the elements inside that collection that array. And here we're going to use an enhanced for loop just to go ahead and print out the values of our employees, their name and their salary. And here we can see that the smallest salary, Harry, has been sorted first, then Tony, and then Carl, which of course is not the original ordering of the elements, right? The original ordering was Harry, Carl, Tony, and now it's Harry, Tony, Carl. Excellent. And so that's just a very quick, uh, a quick overview of the comparable interface and why it's pretty critical for you to make a decision to implement it with any of your user defined classes. If your intent is to ever be able to compare one instance of your class to another for the purposes of sorting. If you don't do that, then you won't be able to sort your, uh, your uh, instances. So is there any questions related to this topic?